this, um, what we're doing is called factoring. Okay? And there's, there's things along our path of learning, path of learning in algebra, that I really want to impress on you as being very, very important. Things like what a function is, we've talked about functions a lot. Functions are these things that have an input and output, and for every input, there's only one output. That was a very important thing. It's a concept we need to go back to lots and lots and lots. Okay, so this is one of those things. The word factor is going to be a really important thing. When I say factor, it should like bring up a, a definition of what factor is. Okay, it's a simple definition. A factor. Let's let's use an example. Three is a factor of a lot of things. And for for example, three is a factor of fifteen. Okay, now what is the Proof that three is a factor of fifteen. Three times five is fifteen. Times five is 15. Because three times five is fifteen. Okay. Well, that's numbers. We're factoring numbers. Now we're factoring quadratics. Okay. So to factor a quadratic is to split it apart into two things that multiply together to give you the original quadratic. Just like. Factoring 15 is splitting it apart into 3 times 5, two things that multiply together to give you 15. Not add, not subtract, but multiply. Okay? And we may split it into two or three or four different things that multiply together. Now, in the case of quadratics, we're just going to split it into two things, those two parentheses. Right? The thing that's going to help us with this is remembering what it's like to multiply two parentheses together. Okay, so really quickly, an example x plus 2, x plus um, 11. x plus 2 and x plus 11. So we're going to multiply these together, and being able to multiply these together is going to help us figure out what goes in these two parentheses, so that when we multiply these two parentheses together, we get this. Okay? So we're just going backwards right now of what we're doing here. Here we're factoring, here we're multiplying. Uh, so real quick, x squared plus 11x, plus 2x, plus 22. And we add these two together, x squared plus uh, 13x, plus 22. So here we multiplied, and if we were to start with this one and go this direction, that would be called factor. All right. So we notice that x times x is x squared. That makes the first part pretty easy. If we want to get an s squared, we must have an s times an s. s times s is s squared. Um, so it looks like all we're looking for are two numbers that multiply together. When we multiply those two numbers together, like that part of the distribution gives us the 22, the constant that you see in the quadratic. Okay, that makes it it's a nice clue as to what numbers we're looking for because they multiply together to give you the constant. Just straight those two numbers multiply together. So in this case, we're going to multiply those together and get what? When we multiply these two numbers together, what will we get as a result? 16. Okay. Let's think of all the ways to get 16. 8 times 2, positive 8 times positive 2, negative 8 times negative 2, 16 times 1, negative 16 times negative 1, uh, 4 times 4, negative 4 times negative 4. Right. Those are all the ways we can multiply and get 16, positive 16. All right. But there's only one only one possibility, and how do we figure out what that possibility is? Uh, how do we know if it's 8 and 2, or 4 and 4, or 16 and 1? Let's go ahead and say the answer. I'm sure someone knows the answer. How do we determine which two numbers we use? also add to make negative 10. You can see that here. These two numbers here, 2 times 11 is 22. 2x, right? 2 times x gives us 2x. 11 times x gives us 11x. And they add together to make 13x. Same thing here. Whatever numbers we put here, this number and this number, this one's going to multiply by s, this one's going to multiply by s. We're going to add those two s terms together and get negative 10.
So what two numbers? Multiply to make positive 16 and add to make negative 10. Yeah. Negative 2, negative 2, negative 8. Okay? And until, well, even, not even until then. We should always just double check and make sure it all multiplies out. As we get more experience, we'll be much, much faster at this. Okay? But we should always check it out and see if it works. Okay, s times s is s squared, negative 8s, negative 2s, positive 16, negative, yeah, okay, s squared minus 10s plus 16. Okay. So here. Um, definitely d times d is d squared. I'm always just playing this back in our mind. When I multiply this out, will it come out correctly? Yes, it will, because d times d is d squared. All right, we're looking for two numbers that, just like this, 2 times 11 is 22, and this one, negative 2 times negative 8 is positive 16. Here, this number times this number needs to be 99. Not a lot of ways to make 99, right? What numbers multiply to make 99? 11 and 9. Is there another possibility? But 99 and 1. Okay, so we're, we'll think about that. Um, so we need to make a positive 99 and it needs to add to a negative 20. So these two numbers need to multiply to make positive and add to make a negative. The only possibility would be two negative numbers. Two negative numbers multiply to make a positive and two negative numbers add to make a negative number. So what numbers multiply to 99 and add to negative 20? Yes? Negative 11 and negative 9. Negative 11 and negative 9. We gotta double check that. D times D is D squared. D times negative nine, negative nine. D, negative 11, D. Positive 99, they do add together to make negative 20 plus 99, okay? Now that we checked it, we can see how great it works out. Back up to here, we did it, we back it. Um, so, let's see if I can just kind of lay this out for you here. We're going to be working in 9.4 and 9.5. Okay. We're going to be one thing factoring. We're going to do some factoring. It's actually thick, simpler factoring than what we have been doing. Factoring what's called a monomial. We'll talk about what a monomial is. Um, and we're going to... Um, yeah, solve, so quadratic equations, solving some quadratic equations today. Um, should put a little subtext to that. Uh, they're already factored. We're going to take some quadratic equations that have our, their quadratics are already factored, and we're going to solve for x or d or s or whatever. Um, and here, basically, we're just going to we're going to solve some more quadratic equations. Using factoring, meaning these are not factored yet. So factoring is going to play a big part in helping us solve these quadratic equations. The equations that we have solved so far have been um, just linear equations, where x is to the first power. Now x is to the second power, or s or f or whatever it is is to the second power. How do we solve those equations? Well, with factoring. Right. So let's take the first kind of factoring uh, that, that I'm talking about up there, factoring monomials, and move from there. Okay. So let's talk about this monomial. It's split into mono and nomial. Okay. What does mono mean? Does anybody know? There's stereo. Do you know what stereo means? Stereo and there's mono. Anybody know what that means? Yeah, one. Mono means one. And stereo, I don't know why 
this means, but when you're choosing between mono and stereo, stereo means there's like two speaker outputs. There's like a mix of those two. Mono just means like both speakers get the same signal. Okay. So anyways, mono means one. Monomial means uh, one. I like to think of term as, or nomial meaning term, okay? One term. Let me show you some examples of monomials. Here's one, three x. 12x squared, 45x to the third, uh, 115x squared, y to the third, z to the fifth. Like a string of things that is multiplied together like that, that's a, that's a monomial, it's one term. Okay. What would make a, a binomial? Well, that would be like x plus 2. You see this plus separates terms. Or uh, 15x squared minus 2x, or 35x to the third plus 16y. Uh, Anything that has two terms, this would be a binomial. A trinomial would have three terms. And then we get into polynomials, which are just many terms. Okay. Anything beyond three, you just call it a polynomial with however many terms. So these are the kinds of things mainly these things, and not so much this kind of monomial. But we're going to factor these kinds of things out of a quadratic. Okay? We're going to look for the biggest monomial we can pull out of a quadratic, or even something bigger than a quadratic. Okay, so let's start with an easy one. 3x squared plus 6. Okay. No, I'm going to write it down. And then uh, yesterday, and then, oh, no, not yesterday, but just, the, just uh, up till Tuesday, my wife and I worked on this table, built this table from scratch. That's our big exciting news. Okay. And then, yeah, that, and I guess like a baby is coming in, that's exciting news. Yeah, we'll do that. That table's pretty nice, right? Three people can sit on the side, the whole, it's one side. But here we go. Now we got this 3x squared plus 6. We're going to factor a monomial out of both of them. So you can think of factoring a monomial like the reverse of distributing. Okay, like we distributed something in there, and now we're taking it back out and, and uh, setting it up to be distributed back in. So that would look like this. Parentheses, something inside, something outside. So that when we distribute the thing that's outside, we get 3x squared plus 6. Does anyone think of what, like, what could have been distributed into what else to get 3x squared plus 6? Yeah. A 3? Distribute a 3. Into what? What's in the parentheses? x to the third. x squared? Yeah, x squared. What's that? Yeah, plus 2. Plus 2? Yeah, exactly. That's exactly what factoring the monomial looks like. The 3, if we were to distribute it back in, would give us 3x squared plus 6. Factoring a monomial, real simple, simple deal. Okay. This one looks pretty simple, but it turns out to be, I don't know, a little bit tricky for some reason. So let's do um, 25x squared plus 5. Undistribute, the biggest thing you could possibly think of from both of those things. And so that you would, if you were to distribute this thing back in, you would get 25x squared plus 5. Okay? Give that you know, 45 seconds of thought. 
sure you can figure it out. Okay. So typically, I find that when I say we're undistributing, that helps people out. Okay. Uh, if you want to think of it a different way, just think: all we're doing is looking for in this term and this term. What do those two terms, what factor do those two terms have in common? Five times one. Five times one is five. So they have a common factor of five. That is the factor that we take out of both of them, which means this needs to be a five x squared, so that five times five x squared is 25 x squared. And this is the thing that gets a lot of people, what needs to be right here? Five. Four. Five. If that was a 5, then 5 times 5 would also give me a 25 there. Okay. That's, the, that's the thing that is tricky, and that's why I put it up here, because it's that putting a 1 right there, it, you know, it takes a, a couple of times of practice to, to think, oh, there should be a 1. Right. Well, factoring a monomial, we can factor more than just numbers out. We can factor out variable factors as well. Okay. Um, well, just before we do that, let, let's um, do 32x squared plus 16, no, not 16, uh, 24. Let's do that one. Okay, so just like what we just did, we'll just do it real quick together. What is the biggest factor that I can factor out of both of these? 8. eight. Okay, I was trying for 4, but 8 is even better. All right, so 8 times what? 4. X squared, right? Got to get that X squared. Plus 3. Okay. Now let me show you something. So I was trying to make the answer, like the thing that we factor out 4. Let's say that I did factor out 4, okay? Uh, you know, alternate universe over here. I factored out a 4, that would give me 8x squared plus 6, right? Factored that out. But you know that it could have been 8. But let's look at these two. Is there something else I can factor out of these two? A 2 as well. So a 2 can also get factored out. So now I have 4 times 2 times, okay, so it's 2 times 4x squared plus 2 times 3 would give me the 6. And then 4 times the 2 gives me that 8. It's kind of like when you are simplifying a fraction, right? And you find a common factor and you cancel that out, and you're like, oh, I could cancel out a 3 as, oh, I can cancel out a 5 too. So you cancel out, cancel out, cancel out. Yeah. It's kind of like canceling out, but if they, those numbers don't just disappear. That factor just has to come outside of the parentheses, right? So that it can be distributed back in. Okay, so scale of one to five, how does everybody feel about factoring out monomials of just numbers so far? Okay, all right. So now let's, let's still factor monomials, but then and not always just numbers can be factored out. We can also factor out, like I said, uh, variables like x's or s's or whatever the case might be. Uh, so about 12x squared plus 9x. So factor out as much as you can, numbers and variables, anything you can think of, so that if I distribute it back in, I'll get 12x squared plus 9x. Okay. Give just a few seconds to figure out. What number can we factor out, or, or what can we factor out, not just number, what can we factor out of both of these three? A three? Okay, anything else? What? And an x. So if I factor out an x as well, let's see what happens there. Can I do this? Three times, three x, can I put something here, that, so three x times this will give me 12 x squared, what would this be? Four x. 3x times 4x is 12x squared. Great. As long as we can still you know, write something here so that 3x times this gives us 
9x and we at least factor something out that's allowed. What can we put here so that 3x times this is 9x? Just the number 3. And then we double check it. 3x times 4x, 12x squared, 3x times 3, 9x. So we are looking for the, the most stuff, the biggest factor that we can pull out, the greatest common factor. It's the same thing we're looking for when we simplify fractions, like I said. Okay, question? You could, I mean, it's possible, but then it's like when I showed you this one, where I pulled out a four, but also a two could get pulled out. That there's like more that we could do. We want to factor out, put stuff outside the parentheses as much as we can. Okay. So if we just factor out a three, what we'll get is four x squared plus three x. Okay, but again, like an x can still be factored out of both of these. So we can bring that x out here, and now we have 4x plus 3. Put as much outside the parentheses as possible. That's what we'd like to do. Let me give you one that's like a big exponent. So let's see if we can pull out the, the biggest thing possible. Um, let's see. Calculator for this one. Let's say thirty five X to the seventh minus um, forty nine X to the fifth. Uh, so, what's the largest number factor that we can pull out? Seven. Seven. Um, what about, how many factors of x can we pull out? Five. Five of them. Right, we can put an x to the fifth out here. Uh, you'll notice, after a few times of doing this, really, whichever x has the lowest power, then this has x to the fifth. This is also x to the fifth times x squared. So, so you can just take out, you can factor out however many x's is the lowest. Does that make sense? Right, x to the fifth can come out here, and now this turns into, like, what does this have to be so that we multiply and get 35x to the seventh? 5x squared, that's 7 times 5 is 35. x to the fifth times x squared, that's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5x's times 1, 2x's. So that's seven x's we're multiplying together. Minus what? Seven. Just the number seven, right? Seven times negative seven is negative 49 times x to the fifth. It's negative 49 times x to the fifth. Okay. Monoliles. What does monoliel mean? Just one. Just one, one thing, one term. Uh, what's the monomial here? 7x to the fifth. That's the monomial that we factored out of uh, that original polynomial. Okay, so we factored, poly uh, factored uh, monomials out. Actually, let's, 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 let's factor a monomial out of a trinomial and we'll call it done. Um, let's see. So, Minus 54x squared plus uh, 24x um, to the seventh. I've got three terms, but we're really just looking at all three of those terms. What's the biggest number that they all have in common as a factor, and what is the biggest number of x's that they all have in common that I can factor out? Some excellent work going on. So this is going to be the last one that we just explicitly are learning how to factor out a single monomial. All right. I'm going to do it in such a way that I don't factor out enough, and then I'm going to have to factor out more. Okay. Like I didn't pull a big enough factor out. So I look at all these. 
One of them ends in a two, one of them ends in a four, the other one ends in a four, so clearly they all had a two in common. So let's start with a two. Factor out a two, okay? And I don't even think about the x's, so I just factor out a two. So this divided by two is 21, I got x to the 10, minus uh, 27 x squared plus 12 x to 7. Is this true? It's true. It's true because I could distribute the 2 and it would come out the same. Okay, so I factored out the 2. But there's more that I can factor out. What, what can I factor out of all of these? A 3. They all have a 3 in common. 3 times 7, 3 times 9, 3 times 4. So I can also factor out a 3. And when I, when I pull out this 3, it's just going to get multiplied by that 2. Right, so that's going to be a 6. So I'm factoring out a 3. That's 3 times 7. 3 times 9. Four. And then it occurs to me that these all have x factors in them, right? How many x's can I factor out? Two. Two. Right, it's the lowest power of x. I factored out here x squared. I've got seven x to the now x squared times what? X to the eighth. Minus nine times who? One. Six x squared times nine is going to be negative fifty-four x squared and down here. Four x to the fifth. X squared times x to the fifth is x to the seventh. Alright, scale of one to five again. How do you guys feel? That's four to the fives are good. If you don't vote, you can't be sad if I move on. Okay, moving on. You got some high fours out there? Basketball time. Okay. So now we're going to go on to the second thing. Let me remind you what the second thing was. Right there. Okay, so we factored some monomials. Now we're going to uh, solve some quadratic equations that are already factored. And actually, we're going to add another one uh, um, by factoring a monomial. So first, to solve quadratics is very different from solving a linear equation. Okay, so if I had a linear equation like 5x plus 2 equals 0, let's say. Okay, this is old school stuff. How would we solve this equation? Right. Um, by factoring it? Or? We will factor, but we don't, we're not going to factor this one. Okay. Just think, if you had never learned about factoring, what would you do with this problem to solve for x? Get x by itself. Divide, or no, subtract it. There you go. Yeah, negative 2. And then? Divide 5. x equals negative 2 things, right? OK. We're going to try and solve things like x squared plus 5x plus 4 equals 0. The same ideas do not apply. We are going to use factoring. Okay. Spoiler alert, factoring is what we're going to use. We're not going to subtract 4 from both sides and divide by 5 or whatever, because that's just not going to get an x by itself. That just causes more problems. Okay. So first of all, before we can do this, before we can understand why we use factoring, we need to talk about something called the zero product property. Zero product property. Okay, so understand this. Imagine I take a number a. In algebra for a while, I can say the number a and it doesn't change the count. I'm going to multiply it by some other number, b. Do you know what a is? Does somebody tell me what a is equal to? Of course you can't. I haven't told you what it is. There's no way to figure it out. I haven't told you anything about a. Can you tell me what b is? Nope. Can't tell me what b is. Okay. So I multiply these together, but here is the kicker. It equals zero when I multiply them together. Can you make any kind of conclusions about A or B? One of them is zero. Yes, that is. 
that is really, 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 really important. One of them has to be zero. That's the important thing. We've got to see these problems as one number times another equals zero, so one of them has to be zero. Another way to say that A must be zero, and if it's not, if A isn't zero, then what do we know for sure? B is definitely zero. And if A or B is not zero, and A and B both are not zero, then this is impossible. You couldn't possibly multiply numbers together and get zero unless one of them was zero. That's the zero product problem. All right. Well, what does it look like to us? Like, what do A and B look like when we're working with quadratics? Well, they might look like x plus 2 times x minus 7 is equal to 0. And getting it equal to 0 is very important. There is, you know, there should be 1 or 7 or 52. It needs to be 0. Right? If I tell you that A times B equals 7, I don't know anything about A or B. A or B could be any number of things. There's lots of numbers that multiply to make 7, right? They're all like weird decimals, but they still multiply to 7. All right. But what can we say about these two things? This would be A, this would be B. What can we say? That is x equals 0. We've got to think it's the thing that we're multiplying, right? This whole thing is A. This whole thing is B. There's two things being multiplied here. This parentheses is being multiplied by this parentheses. Okay. What do we say over here? What do we say about A or B? One of them is zero. One of A or B, one of them is zero. Okay, in this case, A is x plus two. What can we say about x plus two for sure? It's gotta be equal to zero, or if it's not, what, what does have to be equal to zero? x minus seven would have to be equal to zero. See, either this whole parentheses has to be zero, so zero times whatever this is is zero, or this whole parentheses is zero, so the zero times this parentheses is zero. So then we say, what would x have to be to make this parentheses zero? Negative two. Negative two. Subtract two on both sides. You got x is negative two. Just something very funny. Not so funny. Just pointing at a picture in my head. <coughs> Pleased in any way? Couldn't have the smiling and pointing. <laughs> she just felt like that. Very suspicious. Okay. All right. So in this one, if x is seven, and we plug in seven there, seven minus seven is zero. Zero times. It doesn't even matter what this is, but it would be nine. Right? Seven plus two would be nine. So seven plus two, nine times 7 minus 7 is 0, 9 times 0 is 0, okay? So here we found two solutions to a quadratic equation. Quadratic equations have two solutions. Okay. The idea, we have two factors times each other. We're going to set them both equal to 0 because that's got to be true by the zero product property. And then we solve for x. So uh, let me write another one here, another example. Um, x minus 10 times uh, 2x plus 3 is 0. Very important that this is 0. If this said 1 or 2 or any other number that's 0, we wouldn't be able to do the thing here. But we can. We are multiplying two things together, and they equal 0. So one of them has to be zero, or if not, the other one has to be equal to zero. So instead of equal to zero, just like this, we can solve for x. Okay. Pencils in hand, or pens. Put them on papers, and move them until writing comes out. OK, now try and make that writing coherent so that it looks like that over there. Okay. Work this one out. Solve for x, so you should get, you should get two x's. Alright. Uh, I'm gonna tell me what to do first. Yeah, bear warning, 
we're, fair warning, I'm going to ask you why we're doing this. Danielle, can you tell me? What and why? Okay, so you're saying that if x is 10, that's a good thing because what happens? It changes the parentheses to 0. Changes the parentheses to 0. So, okay, let's, let's like run that all through. If I make the x is equal to 10, it should, it should come out to be 0. Let's test that out. 10 minus 10. Okay, and over here we have 2 times 10 plus 3. It needs to be equal to 0. If it's not, then it's not correct. The 0 times 20 plus 3 is 23. And what's 0 times 23? 0. So yes, x is 10 is a solution to this quadratic equation. All right. So that's important. This parentheses needs to be equal to 0. Right? It has to be equal to 0. Otherwise, if it weren't, there'd no, be no way we get 0. Or if this wasn't 0, then, then what would have to be equal to 0? 2x plus 3 would have to be equal to 0. Okay. Now I want to warn you, as I warned you at the beginning of the year, don't just rely on your ability to just say, oh, it, that needs to be 10. Okay. I worked with at least three students who said, how do I figure out what to plug in for x here? Okay. It's simple. This needs to be equal to what? Has to be equal to 0. Somebody tell me, again, why do I know for sure I'm a good detective, and I'm gathering clues, and now I've concluded that for sure this has to be equal to zero. How do I know that? Zero times anything is zero? Yeah, we'll, we'll call that good at that. And we kind of have to, what we really have to say is, if I could multiply two things together and I could get zero, then one of those numbers would have to be zero. It's not the same, but it is a little different. So we need this to be zero, because the only way to multiply two numbers together and get zero is if one of them is zero. So this has to be equal to zero. Well, now what we've done is set up a really simple equation that is not too challenging to solve for x, right? What do we do to solve for x in this equation? We divide by 2 first. Subtract, that would subtract 3. 2x equals negative 3. <coughs> x equals negative 3 halves. x is negative 3 halves. Let's test that one out. We tested it out here. Let's test it out uh, with negative 3 halves. So negative 3 halves uh, minus 10 times 2 over 1 times negative 3 over 2 plus 3. I'm not even going to worry about this because I know, like I'm not going to get common denominators and stuff. 2 cancels with the 2. This is negative 3 plus 3 is 0 times whatever this is. It doesn't really matter, right? Because 0 times this is going to be what? 0. So if I have two factors, like x plus 2 and x minus 7, let's make it something else so it's not so too easy, I guess. Three x minus seven equals zero. First thing I'm going to do is set each factor equal to zero. That looks like this: x plus two equals zero, or three x minus seven. You can't get both of them to be equal to zero at the same time unless they're identical. But if one of them is zero, that's good. If the other one is zero, that's good. One of them has to be zero. Solve for x. Here we subtract 2 on both sides. x equals negative 2. Here, add 7 to both sides. 3x equals 7. Divide by 3 on both sides. x equals 7 thirds. up here so you can see what you're supposed to do, get the, the mind space of that. Uh, do 
x minus 12 times uh, 3x plus Exactly the same kind of a problem. It's a quadratic is the factor. Solve for x. Okay. So here is how, how many things are being multiplied together here? Two. Two things. Uh, parentheses and another set of parentheses. Two things. Like if I plug in a number for x, this will be some number, and this will be some other number, and I'll multiply two. So here's one of the numbers and two of the numbers. Those both of those numbers. So if you multiply two numbers together and get zero, then you know what? If you multiply two numbers together and the answer is zero, then what do you know for sure? One of them is zero. Right? One, of the, one of the two. Either this is zero, that's why I do this. Either that's zero, that whole parentheses comes out to be zero, so zero times the other thing is zero. Or this whole thing in the parentheses over there, that second parentheses, has to be zero, so that zero times another parentheses comes out to be zero. And if one of those things isn't true, then it must not be equal to zero. So that has to be true. So we add 12 to both sides, get 5x equals 12. Divide by 5x equals 12 fifths. We subtract 6 on both sides, 3x equals negative 6. Divide by 3x equals negative 2. Either way you go, uh, either that's zero or that's zero, solve for x, we get those two solutions. Okay. So that is like a, a 9.4 kind of a problem in the book, 9.4, where they're already factored for you. All right. Uh, now we'll look at one where, like the very, most minor case of factoring is needed. That's where we factor a monomial out. First we factor out a monomial, and then we'll have something times something equals zero, and we solve the equations. We set up two equations and solve them just like this. I'll put that right next to here so you can see how they're similar. Let's say s squared plus 5s equals zero. Let me tell you what we do not do. This is big no. Do not do this. S squared equals zero. 5s equals zero. Okay. Why can I not do that? Because it's added. There's no guarantee that s squared is zero and that 5s is zero. All I need from s squared and 5s is for them to be opposites somehow. Right? So that when you add them together, you get zero. So, no, s squared is not guaranteed to be zero, and 5s is not guaranteed to be zero. But over here, when they're multiplied, guarantee you one of those is zero, because I'm multiplying them together and getting zero. You see the difference? In this case, I can guarantee one of them is zero. In this case, I absolutely cannot guarantee that either of these is zero. In fact, it's really unlikely that s could be zero. Okay. Maybe it will be, but I can't just say that. I've got to use a little more logic here. <clears throat> We're going to use the same idea. We're going to get it to be one thing times another thing equals zero, and then set each of the back equal to zero. Okay. We do that by factoring. So first, let's start with that. What, if just ignore the zero for a second, what can I factor out of 5s squared plus s? And s. s times s plus 5. Follow that? Factor on s? That's that squared, that's that times my s. Okay, now, is this anything like this now? Yeah. How are they similar? How are they similar problems? How is this similar to that in a way that they were not similar before? Parentheses. Okay, and the parentheses is telling us that what, we're, what are we doing with these two things, this thing and this thing? Multiplying them together. We're multiplying two numbers together now. Where it was adding two numbers here, we've rewritten it by factoring so that it's multiplication. Now that it's multiplication and it's equal to zero, 
what do we do after that? What did we do back here when they were both equal to zero? Or both uh, multiply together? How do we solve the variables? Okay, just before that, what do we have to do? Yes, get them both equal to zero, right? Both of the factors have to be equal to zero. <coughs> so s equals zero, so that would be zero times this is zero, or s plus five is equal to zero. That's an s, not another five. S plus five equals zero. This one is solved. S is by itself, s is zero. This one we subtract five on both sides. S equals negative five. It also gives us zero. Try this one. S x squared plus Okay, what can we factor out of both of these? X. If you can summarize this next question, you know, answer it fully or mostly, and I'm going to give you three checks for sure. Why are we doing this? Why do we? Why are we factoring out an X? Why are we rewriting it this way? What is the reason? Raw form of, of x times x plus 3. Okay, but why? Like we're trying to solve for x, right? So, how, do, how does doing that enable us to solve for x? Because we're multiplying. Because now it's multiplying. Okay. So, that's important. It is important that it is multiplying instead of adding. Okay. Why, is that, why is that important? Yeah, something else? Okay, so now it shows what, what it looks like as multiplication. What is it equal to when we multiply? Why is that important? Okay, all right. The three of you can work together. Good. I'll say it again. Um, it's important in order to solve for x. We write this as multiplication and have it be equal to zero. Because when we write it as multiplication, we can say for sure that since we multiply these together and get zero, that one of them has to be zero. So by writing it this way, we can say for sure that x has to be zero because zero times this is zero. Or x plus three for sure has to be equal to zero because zero times this would be zero. And there's just no other way to do it. There's no way to multiply and get zero than to multiply by zero. So then that would mean x is negative 3. So we have found the two solutions. If I put 0 in for x, that's 0 times 3. 0 plus 3 is 3. 0 times 3 is 0. If I put negative 3 in there, negative 3, times, or negative 3 plus 3 is 0, times negative 3 for x is still 0. And there is absolutely no other possibility. x couldn't possibly be any other number besides 0 or negative 3. All right. Now. We've done some simple factoring, solving quadratics, and now we're going to do some slightly more complicated factoring, but the factoring is going to be like what you saw in the quiz or what we did at the beginning of class today. We're going to factor the quadratic first, set each factor equal to zero, and solve for x in both cases, all right? Really what we're doing is putting one more step before this one, before it's factored. We do the factoring now, but then we do the same thing. We set it equal to zero, and then we solve for x. Let's say x squared plus 5x plus 6 equals 0. First factor. Set each factor equal to zero. 
solve for x. <coughs> All right. Let's remember how these guys factor. We have three terms like this. Yeah, be careful of that. Like I saw um, one that was x times x plus 5 plus 6. That, that, an x did get factored out, but this is not factored. This is not the factored form of that. Factored would mean something times something, right? Remember how we talked about factors? 3 is a factor of 15 because 3 times 5 is 15. This is x times x plus 5 plus 6, so that's not purely multiplication. Remember that to factor one of these, it's going to look like the two sets of parentheses. So how does it factor? What do these two factors look like? Cameron? x plus 2, x plus 3. Okay. Double check it in your mind. Multiply it out. x squared, 3x, plus 2x, plus 6. 3x plus 2x is 5x. 2 times 3 is 6. Equals 0. Okay, now I have a number times another number is equal to 0. Right? So that must mean that either this number is 0 or this number is 0, and then I solve for x. Back 3 on both sides, x is negative 3. Last one. X squared plus 9x equals um, negative 20. You might be thinking in these problems, uh, factor both set each equal to this number. If this number is not 0, you're in bad news. If this is not 0, that's bad news. Let me show you why. Let me show you what is really common to do here. I'll factor out an x, get x plus 9, equals negative 20. Right? Factored it, it's factored, it's equal to negative 20. Okay. What happens a lot next is x equals negative 20 x plus 9 equals negative 20. Again, this is a big, fat, no, don't do this. Okay. But this is what, what happens a lot. We set each factor equal to the number that's on the right. Why can, this, why do we, why can we not do this? Compare it to setting it equal to, equal to 0. What's the difference? Why can we set them both equal to 0, but we can't just set them both equal to negative 20? One of them wouldn't have to be zero. Yeah, neither one of these has to be zero right now, and also neither one of these has to be negative 20. Why would x have to be negative 20 to get negative 20? Right? I don't have to have this be negative 20 to get negative 20. Okay, by comparison, this does have to be zero in order to multiply and get zero. Or this does have to be zero to equal zero. There's lots of ways to multiply to negative 20, right? But only one way to multiply to zero is to multiply by zero. So we can't, can't say this. We can't say x equals negative 20 or x plus 9 equals negative 20. Zero. It's very important that the other side of the equation is zero. So how are we going to get one of the sides to be zero? Factor this to make it equal zero? How do I get this side to be zero? Add 20. Right? No like terms here, so we just get x squared plus 9x plus 20. And now we have exactly the same kind of a problem as this. We got a quadratic equals 0, factor it, set each factor equal to 0, and solve for x.
Anybody done it that quickly? You know how this factors? Four and five. So we set x plus four equal to zero. Subtract four on both sides. X plus five equals zero. Subtract five on both sides. Side zero on the other, very, very important. 